PCC have called Britain's most dangerous and prolific child molester ever. Jimmy Savile spent 11 successive New Year's Eves at Chequers, the most powerful residence in the land, as a guest of Conservative Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher. And today's police report on the 450 abuse crimes Jimmy Savile committed and the 34 known rapes begs the question, why was none of this published or reported in Britain's so-called free press, nor noticed by the police and prosecuted by them until after he was dead? Then there is the Lord McAlpine case. Evidence of McAlpine's innocence from paedophile involvement has still not been tested in court. Chris Patton's BBC caved in and settled out of court. Uh, the BBC is, of course, heavily implicated in Savile's paedophilia, allowing sexual assaults to play, take place on BBC premises. And I suppose we ought to also point out that both two, uh, Lord McAlpine and Chris Patton, are both uh, Tories. Uh, there is still our own Bristol case as well. BBC presenter and child molester Peter Rowell, who's now in jail, he was one of the, also one of the Prince Charles's ambassadors entrusted with assessing young people as part of the Prince's Trust scheme. So today, maybe some closure for victims and their families if they're still alive, but still no justice. Those that censored the transmission of Liz McKean's December 2011 Jimmy Savile Newsnight expose are still working at the BBC. Only the Director General George Entwistle was given a big payoff to walk. BBC under former Bath Tory MP and Cabinet Minister Chris Patton. Uh, of course, they're both uh, colleagues of each other. So I spoke to to Michael Shrimpton about this very issue and first put to him questions about the Jimmy Savile and if he thought that the Tory party had really come clean about what Savile had been up to. I'm Michael Shrimpton. My day job is barrister. I used to be an immigration judge many years ago. My other job is as an intelligence and national security consultant. I've just written my first major book, Spy Hunter. We weren't getting anywhere in the intelligence community. We were being blocked persistently and consistently in London and Washington and it seemed to me that only by bringing public pressure to bear on politicians could you actually get anywhere. It's extraordinarily frustrating. Intelligence is about speaking truth to power but if there's nobody in power able to act on the intelligence then it's a little bit pointless gathering it in the first place. And there are people still alive who are involved in the paedophile scandal and obviously I'm not going to name them on a radio program but the most prominent paedophile associated with the Savile Ring was a man called Edward Heath, uh, who you may, may recall was Prime Minister and took us into the EEC. And Heath was recruited as something that Christopher Story published in 2005, something which was confirmed to me by um, General Obus Marcus Wolfe of the DVD and the Stasi. Heath was recruited by the Germans in 1937. I've said this in Spy Hunter. Heath was into little boys and Savile was supplying them. A number of these boys were taken out of the Haute de Guren home in Jersey. Savile was taking children from a children's home with the support of German assets in Jersey. Remember, the Germans used to run Jersey. And whenever the Germans overtake somewhere, there's always a stay-behind intelligence organisation. German assets didn't pull out of Jersey in '45. Only German troops marched out, they surrendered. The German intelligence operation in Jersey stayed on after 45. Jersey was very important to the Germans because of offshore financing, because we do a lot of our offshore financing through Jersey. The banking in Jersey is quite interesting. And what was happening was that children's homes in the Channel Islands, particularly at De Gren in Jersey, uh, children were being taken from these homes, boys in the case of Edward Heath, as he was gay, um, and a paedophile, were being taken onto his yacht, the Morning Cloud, um, there were, in fact, several morning clouds, but um, there was one in particular which won the Sydney Hobart Yacht Race, which was eventually sunk in the English Channel, from memory. Uh, but it was the boat that was sunk on which most of the abuse took place. Savile was actually going out to... He went down to Jersey, and he was actually taking boys. There was another man involved as well, but Savile himself took boys from the children's home, where he was a guest or welcome, on to the boat. So he was taking boys out onto Morning Cloud. Now, since Heath was well known, and since the boys were talking young men, uh, it depends how you define child, but as a lawyer, one would define, uh, normally we define children as under the age of 14, which is the age of criminal responsibility. They were about that age, sadly, but they were old enough to know who was abusing them. It's quite clear that in most cases they weren't willing to be abused. They were, uh, and even if they were, you know, at that age, we don't regard consent as informed consent. 
defined in the, Ameri in the United States of a phrase, statutory rape. The boys were murdered and thrown off the boat. Now, a very courageous Jersey police officer who was aware of the paedophile ring, was aware that boys were being supplied to politicians and key figures in Jersey, knowing that children had gone missing from the nursing, and there's no dispute about that, uh, the police in Jersey were aware that they had missing kiddies. Their theory, which is quite perfectly reasonable theory, was that they must be buried in the grounds. And I think you, if you look at the files, you see there was a, an attempt to uh, find the, their remains by digging up the grounds. Uh, was it Lenny Harper? It's been some time since I looked at the file on this, but if you told me it was Lenny Harper, I wouldn't dispute that for a moment. What I do know is this police officer was very competent, very courageous, because he was uh, up against a cabinet office-backed paedophile ring, and the investigation he was conducting was at some professional risk, and indeed uh, I suspect his life was also at risk at one point, because he was getting close to some very uncomfortable truths for certain people in the cabinet office, GO2 in London, and certain people in Jersey in the German network, which is, even today, there's still a German network in the Channel Islands. His theory that the boys had been buried in the grounds of the nursing home was a perfectly reasonable one, a good copper. Good theory, but wrong. The boys were, in fact, being taken to a boat. It happened to be a Batiste boat, or yacht, and they were murdered and thrown overboard. So there's no point, sadly, in looking for their graves. They don't have any grave except the sea. That's why the BBC and the Cabinet Office have been so keen to protect Savile. That's why the Cabinet Office in the 1980s were willing to back Savile to the point of giving him a position of authority at Broadmoor, which is an absolute... You, know, you don't put a paedophile in charge of Broadmoor. It's just like putting a lunatic in charge of the asylum or a drunk in charge of a brewery or David Cameron in charge of a government, no offence intended. The Cabinet Secretary at the time, who thankfully is no longer with us, Hunt, was also a paedophile, was in on this, met Savile, uh, he was Catholic, met Savile, as did that very nice man, the late Archbishop of Westminster, Cardinal Basil Hume. Basil was not a paedophile, but knew Hunt and had a shrewd idea. He wasn't stupid. He had a shrewd idea of what had been going on, and I've no doubt was told to keep a lid on it. The Hunt was in on it, so the Cabinet Secretary at the time was in on it, was aware of what was going on, was aware he had a Prime Minister who was involved not just in abusing young boys, but was murdering them as well. It's quite possible that there was a crewman on the yacht who did the actual murder. I'm not saying it, but he necessarily bashed the boys on the boco and tossed them overboard. He may have had somebody do that for him, but he was certainly guilty of murder under English law as an accessory or uh, on the joint enterprise basis. The Cabinet Secretary of the day knew that we had a Prime Minister who was vulnerable to charges of murder at the Old Bailey. Um, bit of a national security mess. And the Cabinet Secretary, as you can well imagine, was very keen to keep a tight lid on things. Uh, Hunt, of course, was working for the Germans and was very keen on British membership of the EEC. And it was Hunt and Heath between them who were responsible for Britain going to the EEC, along with other German spy, exposed in Spy Hunter called uh, Tony Barber. Now, you're, you're painting a picture of uh, lots of sort of high-level paedophile characters in the centre of government. What on earth purpose would that serve? Oh, if someone is inclined in that direction and you can supply them with boys, then you've got a hold on them, or girls. There's nothing worse for a politician than being exposed in the murder and sexual abuse of young people. And if you've got a politician who is abusing and killing young girls and boys, but boys or girls, then you've got a hold on them. This has been a standard German intelligence tactic for decades. Well, surely it's not just the Germans. I mean, the British intelligence surely are using these kinds of tactics. Any intelligence service would want to. No, we're the good guys. I mean, MI5 and MI6 don't do murder. Obviously, occasionally it's necessary to take people out, but that's always done by independent contractors. We're the good guys. Um, we... You're English. You would say that, wouldn't you? <laughs> well, I am British. I'm in favour of the British, and I certainly count myself as a patriotic Englishman, and uh, I am a Britisher, yes. But we are the good guys, and one of the reasons why we're the good guys is we don't approve of the killing of children. We'd never get British intelligence setting up a shooting like the Sandy Hook shooting in the United States, which was again set up by the Germans via Mexico, and a bunch of crazy Mexican drug gangsters rolling up to a school shooting up the kiddies. I mean, it's just absolute nonsense. British intelligence would never, never touch 
an operation like that with a barge pole. I mean, you've said yourself that parts of British intelligence have been infiltrated by other countries. So, I mean, you know, how can you say we would never do such a thing? Ah, oh, well, then it's not we, is it? If a German, in, let's take the assassination of David Kelly, that was done by GO2, which is the German operation in London, and you've got German assets inside Thames Valley Police, uh, for example, where you've got Brits working for the Germans, then you, in my view, is you blame the Germans. You don't blame the Brits, because the Germans are paying them or, or blackmailing them. Pedophilia is a, a wonderful means, if you're a hostile intelligence agency, of blackmailing politicians. <laughs>